And now we'll go to um, uh, Katrina Murphy, who is the cluster manager for the Ireland Southeast Financial Services, uh, to give her presentation on how she can help and how, what she does within her cluster. Gurmagat. Good morning. Thank you very much, Sinead. Just checking you can see my screen okay? Yeah, great. Okay, so um, one of the first things I want to say, actually, listening to Katrina Power's presentation, there's so much cross-clusteral activity that's out there in the opportunities to grow businesses together here. And um, so, you know, I, I really enjoyed um, listening to what's bioeconomy all about. So I'm going to talk about financial services. My name is Katrina Murphy, and I was an absolute pleasure to join you here today. Um, I'm the cluster manager for Ireland Southeast Financial Services Sector. And this is a cluster which kicked off its ignition phase in February 2020. It arose from the Regional Economic Development Plan directed by Ireland Southeast Development Office. It's supported and funded then by the five local authorities, um, Carlo, Kilkenny, Tipperary, Waterford and Wexford. Um, the area itself, Ireland Southeast, is proud to be home to some of the world's leading brands, all of whom thankfully, are expanding and embedding their operations further into the region. Um, Ireland is ranked, or sorry, Ireland Southeast, should I say, is ranked number one for foreign direct investment strategies across the European region of the future. And um, we're also number one for the most competitive region. And the, finally, then, we're ranked number one for the productivity growth in Ireland. So the region is doing really, really well. Um, we've created this cluster with five pillars of strategic work programs in mind, and the actions behind all of these would be very much human resource upgrading, um, again, all focused on that financial services sector, um, expanding the scale and scope of the cluster, cluster networking and trust building, um, increasing innovation and technology capa capacity and business development and business environment, in particular, addressing any impeding growth barriers. As startups, I guess my biggest tip to you would be to say I'd urge you to, and for those scaling as well, or looking at new innovative ideas, um, to speak to the support networks. Do not be shy about setting up um, and setting out all of your challenges. Um, you need, your needs, your challenges um, need to be, I suppose, articulated in every meeting you have with these support networking groups. Um, one of the real um, things that I'd always ask anyone, and I'd urge you to consider it yourself is what's the one thing that drives the results for my business um, and share that and then share also what is holding you back from doubling your activity so you know consider the answers to these questions before engaging with um, the support agencies out there and the resources are there we've got such a rich support system across Ireland and um, but your needs need to be articulated in order to map to meet these as well so and there are two questions I really, really urge you to understand. I'd like to introduce you to the cluster group. So um, one of our strengths has been that in our formation, we've really understood our triple helix approach here with a range of supporting agents across research organizations, universities, technology centers, and other ecosystem actors. Um, there's in, within the enterprise group, there's 33 of them there. There's a broad range of Goliaths and Davids amongst them, and some of the brands you might well know, of which there's 11 of them, which are startup fintech companies who are scaling very fast. Um, demand for fintech services and opportunities for innovative Irish fintechs at home and abroad has never been so strong. Um, there's a global evidence that's very clearly backing up the focus on clustering today. Um, you know, regardless of what your sector, there's a cluster forming or is forming or has formed. And we're all quite new in Ireland um, and it's, cluster policy is being observed across na um, national policymakers today as well to really kind of showcase um, the benefits here. But what we're doing is we're bridging our international network with support routes to market for our members. And um, this is central to the activity for, for startups and scale up companies. And for the region itself then as well, those clusters generate more jobs, higher wages, higher economy growth, better productivity, um, higher levels of innovation and more startups and um, more survival as well, which is important and grounding that scale up as well, which then in turn obviously attracts more investment and more talent. So it really comes back to more generating more startups um, along the way. So the cluster is here in numbers, um, just to give you an insight to it, but we're aligned to the strategy 
um, for the development of Ireland's international financial services sector. Um, Ireland for Finance Strategy 2025, um, particular of interest for ourselves is our regionalization, the diversity and the sustainable finance priorities within this strategy, um, which is happening in terms of regulation and legislation changes. So ESG is a hugely influential factor for our um, sector. Whilst Dublin acts as that main hub for financial services, it has grown to become truly national um, now, and the industry has a significant presence across Ireland Southeast. Um, and the reasoning for the cohort of this group as well. So the regional impact, um, I guess, look at it, there's over 35% now of the sector um, working outside of Dublin, which is um, a big step. So we're led by enterprise, which is extremely important um, to really ground that need and the wants and the barriers that we're championing. So Terry Clune here pictured is um, the leader and founder of Clune Technologies. This is an indigenous company who provides industrial, I'm um, sorry, industry leading solutions for digital sales, global payroll, um, tax compliance, global VAT, and cross border payments. Um, he's employing 1,400 um, across 35 offices in 22 countries. So he's a really well ambassador for our cluster and um, one of those companies I'll talk, speak of a bit more there now in media in a few moments. But um, Focus on fintech then. So uh, I suppose many people, I suppose, uh, have their own interpretation of what fintech is, but in its broadest articulation, it comprises of every area of technology and innovation in the financial services arena, um, from payments, which is probably our large, it is our largest sector in terms of fintech in Ireland is payments, but there's also trading and FX there, big data, um, risk compliance is growing really, really fast and business intelligence to the consumer focus currency exchanges and that peer to peer lending then as well. But in Ireland, we have a really deep heritage for growing financial services businesses um, in the international financial services sector and and equally, I suppose uh, there's a strong history in establishing and scaling Irish technology companies focused on foreign direct uh, markets. So a lot of the, the startups in the fintech area, they're not looking for their Irish consumer, mostly that it is that global um, range that's going out there. But there's a huge diverse range of market part um, participation um, who see fintech as this context for their innovation, or at least the source of the innovation which they can benefit. Um, and Ireland has proven to be really fast at becoming a global center for harnessing the fintech opportunity. It's vibrant, it's dynamic. Um, there's that technology center sector is there, obviously, and it's well established with the global financial service centers and um, a very proactive ecosystem as well. So we're a really good fit um, in terms of fintech opportunities to expand and grow for anybody that's seeking to enter the market. Um, so the association that I'm going to direct you towards, because there's many in which you can, there's a long list of new faces coming to the market, but Fintech and Payments Association of Ireland um, would be the national agency um, that, that we would look to upon with many of our members being um, associated there as well. But their reports there, I'll let you read them and these slides I'm sure will be shared. But importantly, this COVID-19 Black Swan event, um, you know, it really affected every region of the world and shifted in both consumers and business behaviors that um, has driven those fintech opportunities and they're accelerating digital adoptions, um, including that e-payment solutions and contactless banking services. I mean, this was one question in a, just a general sense, how many of us have switched to tapping um, and, you know, utilizing our phone now for payment services? Um, and not even taking the card out of the pocket anymore, you know, so there's there's a lot going on and it's radically shifting consumer behaviours um, and that e-wallet service. But the growing fintech investment and partnerships for corporations that are looking at their transformation in, in efforts as well. So there's mature fintechs and big, big, tech, big tech that are embracing M&A now and growing geographically. Um, and they're adding new forms of value for their consumers. So um, and then behind all of this, there's a, you know, a real increase in attention from the government and regulators as to how fintech is evolving and what needs to be done to support these changes as well. So there's a tremendous amount going on in the market. Um, these are just some of the top global um, trends that I just wanted to point out because it is a global market when you're looking at fintech. And when we look at any industry, we, I suppose 
you know, we need to ask what those questions are I mean, in, in terms of how is the sector changing, which trends have made, had the major impact, and I suppose how might that play out over the next coming um, period or years. And I say period because sometimes it can be just a month or a quarter or even a day that there's a, a change here. But I mean, 2020 has been a huge game changer for fintechs. Um, as a global pandemic, it really, really digitized. And I cannot stress that enough that the, you know, it's been a critical priority for businesses of every shape and size. Um, and focusing on Ireland itself, um, like that double effect of COVID and Brexit sees huge opportunities um, for us here and a huge spike in investment that you can see here on Q4. Um, obviously, Q1 of 2020 had a massive boom, but um, Q4 then really, really um, recouped quite big is due to actually one of our own um, groups, Immediate, um, a Kilkenny born organization, which landed a 50 million. Um, in early stage um, venture capital investments um, from a company called Leading Edge Capital. So it's to support their, their US and APAC markets. Um, I'm going to speed through because I know I'm, I'm getting the, the, the one, two minute moment. So um, look at the support network is there. Um, I don't need to tell you I suppose more, much more about um, what opportunities are there, but what I will say is that um, in our own region, we've got TSSG, Arc Labs, um, Rikon, Arc Labs, um, I said twice now, sorry, and Southeast BIC um, and the NC, uh, NDCRC, sorry. So innovation vouchers are a really good starting point. I know Sharon, who's following me, will be talking to you more about those in a moment. Um, Enterprise Ireland really sees um, themselves as a fintech factory and they're investors as well, which is really important to remember that. So starting with your local enterprise office and route mapping yourself to Enterprise Ireland is really important. And um, there's an exceptional collaboration culture within this ecosystem. And that's not normally, you know, that's, that's quite unusual, to be honest. And it, stra it strands from Ireland to Australia to Hong Kong and, and across back into America as well. So, um, and the approach there from government to really support these as well, um, which FinTech is, is being treated as a national priority in Ireland. Um, and then one of the trends and tips, and I, I, I'm going to slow down before I just to get this through, but the mentors um, have really been highlighting to focus on the product first and growth seconds. So, you know, focusing on your product first and growth second means really you can have millions of customers very, very quickly. Um, but that can shift just as fast. So um, look, collectively in Ireland Southeast, we work in the region and to continue to support your businesses. You can join us and follow us on LinkedIn. This is our showcase page. And um, look, thank you for having me today and for directing the spotlight on FinTech opportunities. I really do appreciate it. And um, my contact details are there and I look forward to speaking to you all later. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Katrina. Uh, I might ask the speakers if you can copy in your contact de details, maybe in the chat so people can see them there, maybe as we uh, move along. And I suppose for, as well as that for um, Uderas is the Leo Enterprise Ireland and IDA the Gaeltacht. So uh, for those residing in the Gaeltacht and those who want to set up their business in the Gaeltacht, uh, you can come through us. Um, and we work in tandem with our colleagues in Enterprise Ireland and IDA and uh, the Le uh, Leos. Uh, we're all of the one, um, the one family. 